Yeah, hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And am I happy? Mary Livingston is in Miami, Florida, and I won't be in Mary this week. <laughs> and I just got back from my hometown where I celebrated my birthday. We had a grand party, and you should have seen the presents I gave my relatives for my birthday. Oh, they were just beautiful. Oh, well, you'll ask me, Jack. Oh, I right, go into that. You know, a man is as old as he looks. So you're 55, huh? I get it. <laughs> I'm nowhere near that. I mean, it's that old to you, but it's because I don't look right, that's all. What do you mean you don't look right? Well, I go to bed at 9 o'clock on weekdays, and I don't drink or smoke or go to nightclubs. I don't keep bad company. Oh, what's wrong with that? Yeah, well, you won't call that living right, do you? <laughs> say, uh, say, Jack, you know my grandfather took care of himself just like you're doing, and, and he lived to be 103. What for? I don't know. I don't know, but the poor fellow's gone now. Oh, that's too bad, Miss Maggie. How did it happen? Well, when he was 98, he started running around, and it just got him, that's all. Oh, well, some of those kids just won't listen. I know how it is. I brought up two grandfathers myself, and I just couldn't keep them out of the coffee club. And I couldn't take the high dee ho out of them, you know? I see, Jack. But how about going ahead with the program and stop all this reminiscence? Oh, all right, yeah. Say, Aloy, did you hear any of the other programs tonight? Yes, Jack, every one of them. Well, I mean, were they anything like ours? I mean, did they say or do anything that we're going to do? Not a thing, Jack. Well, that's fine. Then I have nothing to worry about. You know, after all, we're on very late, and we have to be careful not to repeat jokes. Anyway, here's a brand new story I have for you folks tonight. A man got on a bus the other day. Wait a minute. And after Jack, riding... Wait a minute. Eddie Carter to all that tonight. Wait a minute, you mean the one about the man getting on the bus? Yes. Hmm. Well, I don't need that one anyway. <laughs> uh, here's another little story I picked up in Chicago the other day. An Irishman, a Scotsman, and an Italian were sitting hey. in a tap room. Hey, wait a minute. Is that the story where the Italian and the Irishman discover they have no money? And... Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Joe Bennett told that on his program. Oh. I see. Well, Lloyd, I'm glad we're not conflicting with anyone. I mean, it's good. Anyway, here's a joke that I know is new. I mean, you can't fool me on it. Now, listen. A man who started asked the boy where the post office was. And the boy said, uh, well, 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 wait a minute. So that's a new story, huh? Well, Freddie Allen told it last week. The same joke? Yes, in the same post office. Hmm. Well, too bad our program doesn't go on at 6 a.m. Well, here's a joke I know that hasn't been used. I wrote it myself. Now, listen. There was a cross-eyed judge examining three fellows, see? And the cross-eyed judge... Hello, everybody. Hello, Jack. When did you get back from Chicago? Yesterday. Why? Oh. Uh, no. I, I mean, uh, did you have a nice trip? Yeah, now listen, Parker. There was a cross-eyed judge... There always was. <laughs> oh, yeah? What program did you hear that? Team Cut. Hello, everybody. Hi, you, Frankie. Hello, you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's this? Who are you? Mary Livingston sent me over to take her place. Oh, Mary Livingston sent you over. Well, this is a surprise. I mean, what do you do? I'm fine. What do you do? I didn't say not. I didn't say how do you do. I said what do you do? Well, I sing, dance, wash dishes, mind babies, and I imitate God. A versatile little girl. Are you related to Miss Livingston? No, but my father is. Oh, your father. What is he, an uncle or a cousin? Janitor. A janitor, isn't he? And have you got to go down at our house? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Willie. Really. We can't... I know I'm sorry, but we can't use you. But Miss Livingston paid me already. She gave me a half dollar to take her place. Well, send her back a quarter and go home, Miss. Not them children. I've got paid for this, and I'm going to stay. Now, listen, young lady. I don't like your looks, and I don't want anyone to take Mary's place. Now, go away and don't bother me. Sure, I have dinner with you. What time? Oh, well, I've had enough of you. Listen, if you had a brain, you'd be a half-wit. <laughs> that I'm Burns and Allen's program. Give me that club, will you? Come right. here, you. Thanks, Frank. 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 Well, the fan mail certainly piles up. Just think, folks, I've been away only a few days, and here are several thousand letters. Oh, well, let's see how we're doing. After all, you can't go by the applause in the studio, you know. Here's a lady, uh, a letter, rather, from a lady in Sioux City, Iowa. It says, uh, Dear you with the no-draft ventilation. I heard your program last Sunday in which you gave us Little Women, and I liked it very much. Please send me an autographed picture of Amos and Andy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, it's letter like, letters like this that make you want to carry on, believe me. Uh, here's a letter from a gentleman in Erie, Pennsylvania. 
It says, Mr. Jack Benny, dear sir, I have been listening to you for a long time. Now you listen to me. <laughs> that play you gave us last week, so and so, now it's so and so. Yours truly, Leonard Pencil. <laughs> A big tank. What does he know about radio anyway? Hey, Frank. Ah, here's a letter from Miami, Florida. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, see if you can use this. In the land of golden sunshine down in Florida, it is then that we all know winter's here no more. Dear old winter, dear old... Wait a minute. Who's this from? Oh, Mary Livingston, I see. Well, I'll read one more. Here's a letter from Mr. Clifford Gordon of Chicago. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, Although you do good plays and act them well, I'm afraid you're overlooking a great angle when you ignore a mystery. Everybody loves a mystery, the suspense, the thrill, the continual chase. All right, Mr. Gordon, we get it. Anticipating your letter, we fortunately have been rehearsing a mystery play all week. And we will put it on tonight for your pleasure. It is called The Green Room Murder by S.S. Van E. And here is the mystery. A man was murdered on the Ruby La 8th Avenue and 45th Street near the Merlin Rouge Laundry. Now, who was this man? Where did he come from? Why was he murdered? And who done it? Jack, Jack, you know your English is very bad. Well, so is this play. I will play the part of the mastermind, the great detective. Yes, I will. I'll be advertising. And now, while we are setting the stage, Frank Parker and the serious Kennedy will sing You're in My Heart. Are you ready, Parker? Yes, sir. And sing. <laughs> you are in my heart. That was, uh, that was Frank Parker singing for the first time over the air a number of titles, You're in My Heart. And now for our mystery. The Green Room Murder. Murder. M-O-I-D-E-R. <laughs> the first thing is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Who. And the road is come, come, come. On 8th Avenue and 45th Street. Curtains. Music, Frank. Hey, 
you so much for having a point. Yes, he was the best friend I had in the whole world. Oh, see, look, there's 
from the dead man's back. Never mind the pretty things. I want to know who's got her. Get me back that knife. It's mine. Here you are, miss. Sorry we detained you. Let her go, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Thank you. Be careful how you leave that knife laying around, miss. You might lose it. Oh, don't feather your neck. Make a note of that, Sarge. Feather your neck. Okay, Chief. Now you, you in that full dress suit. What's your name? Frank Black. Frank Black, eh? What do you do for a living? I'm an orchestra leader. Oh, you do nothing, eh? <laughs> I get it. Now listen, did you know that you see? Certainly, we roomed together. He was the best car I ever had. Boy, was he popular. <laughs> what time did you get here tonight? Uh, it was 8.15. Yeah, how do you know it was 8.15? Well, I heard Eddie Cannon kidding Rubinoff. Mm, now we're getting someplace. What is Rubinoff doing? He was playing Mendelssohn's wedding march. Oh, yeah? Sarge, get Mendelssohn on the phone. Okay, Steve. Oh. Hello, Mendel. I want to speak to your son. Hello. Is this Mendelssohn? Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, you did? Okay, goodbye. What do you say, Sarge? He says he heard that on Phil Baker's program. Now we're getting some place. Who that is? Put you a knock on the door. That's it, huh? Go ahead, lady. Take your boat, Benny. Telegram, give it to me. Hmm, Miami, Florida. Ask Mendelssohn if he knows the one about the ghost. Find Mary Livingston. Any answer, sir? No. Hey, the telegram is correct. 76 cents. Let him out, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now you, Frank Black. Hmm? What do you want? Say, Chief, look. There's a rope around the dead man's neck. Oh, oh, yeah? Hey, Black, you know anything about this rope? Sure, it's mine. Give it to me. I want to tie up some music. Give him the rope, Sarge. <laughs> All right, you can go, Black. I'm sorry this murder happened inside of your rope. Thanks. We'll solve this mystery yet. Now I want to speak to the maid again. Yes, sir. Now listen here, young lady. I want to ask you a few questions. Right. You 